This is Visio 2010 Network Rack Diagram Tutorial, uh, Part 3, Layers and Rack ID. This is where we left off um, with Part 2. Uh, we have a rack and a uh, switch that had been modified. However, also, um, in this case, uh, I have downloaded some additional stencils for shapes. So we're going to look at the shape and also shape data pins. Uh, right at this point, we just have the rack and the switch. I want to bring in a couple of other uh, elements. Uh, bring that UPS in. And Then also, I am going to bring in a back panel. And I brought those in because they represent uh, three categories of equipment. And what I want to do at this point is uh, set my equipment up into layers. And go into the layers icon here. I'm going to set up some layer properties. I'm going to add new layers. And I've, uh, you can set up any layer structure that you want. This layer structure is particularly useful for uh, a later part that we'll get to, which is reports. So I'm going to start out with um, networked infrastructure. And by that we mean stuff that's. Uh, Components that aren't switches but are um, connected into the network. I'm going to do also uh, switches. Which are also connected into the network. We're going to do standalone infrastructure. The rack would be an example of that. Uh, and it manages this sort of thing. And I'm going to set up a layer for patch panels. And finally, a layer that uh, may catch everything else. And all these are set to be visible. And uh, for further information about layers and layer properties, uh, there's a uh, Visio 2010 layers tutorial that we have. Uh, now I'm going to assign some of these things to layers. The uh, rack. And I'm going to assign that to the standalone infrastructure layer. Now you can see that it shows up here. In setting this up to show it as part of the um, a menu uh, that's a, in that uh, video, uh, Visio 2010 layers. I'm going to take my switch and put that into switches. I'm going to take my patch panel and put that in patch panels. Take my UPS. And put that in networked infrastructure. One way of uh, checking these is just to go and uh, click on and look up here at switches, patch panels, standalone infrastructure. Structure. So we want to put every object in here uh, in a layer. The next thing uh, we're going to do here is set up uh, some rack ID. Um, I recommend using standard uh, type of arrangement for uh, infrastructure identification. There might be a uh, two-letter code for a building, followed by a floor number, uh, a letter for a series of data closets on that floor, and then uh, a letter 
number for each rack within the data closet. So I'm going to uh, assume that we'll have a number of pages uh, in this drawing, a uh, page for each rack, and I'm going to uh, go to the page setup, and here I'm going to change the uh, name of the page to the rack, and I'm going to just use some uh, random letters here for the building code, um, so CD, then uh, it's going to be on floor one, and this will be rack A on floor one, or closet A on floor one, and then this particular rack in the closet is going to be rack A. So that gives me a uh, five letter code that will identify this rack. Now, uh, once I've done that, I'd like to show that on the drawing. So what I'll do here is draw a little text, uh, draw a box, and I'm going to select the box, go to Insert Field, and here we're going to go to um, Page Info, and we're going to select the page name, we're going to insert that field. So now this gives me uh, a label for that rack, identifying, uh, well actually it's a label for the drawing. So we might have a title block, and that same thing can be done in, in a title block or elsewhere. So this is just a way right at this point to identify um, this drawing. So as we go out on that, you see how that And that's it for this one. Um, we're going to work on some data fields uh, in the next video. For uh, further reference, uh, go to uh, drinfrastructure.com.